Hello everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Today I have a special guest, um, the red-eyed tree frog. Um, I'm gonna pick one out here and show you. Before I do that, I have a spray bottle here with some rainwater in it. And what I like to do is I like to wet my hands because this is a moist frog and we don't want them to dry out. guy here he was awake or waking when I was taking this over to the table you're touching him very gently <laughs> look at him go this is one of the uh, characteristics of a of the leaf frogs they they walk almost they they walk a lot oh he's getting a little shower Well, how come they're so sleepy right now? Uh, tree frogs, most tree frogs are nocturnal and they sleep during the day and they come out and hunt at night. And this little guy, uh, about a week ago, his eyes weren't even this red yet. And uh, it's very neat to see the changes that they go through. Oh, now, so they change. Their colors change. Yes. Well, when this came out of uh, its tadpole stage, um, he was uh, not even really a, a green. He was more of a, uh, a brownish, kind of almost purple, and his eyes were more of a more of a brownish bronze. And uh, now he's bright green. He's starting to develop orange on his feet and his legs, and more red eyes. Now, this um, this species, this is a, a newly discovered um, fact that this is a subspecies of the of the red-eyed tree frog that is found in Costa Rica and Panama. Um, uh, we are here in the Yucatan in Mexico, and these red-eyed tree frogs seem to have not as much blue pigment on their uh, on them uh, I, I noticed where the most of the blue pigmentation on the uh, red-eyed tree frogs found in Costa Rica and Central America they have blue and yellow striped sides and, uh, and on their legs oh yeah I've it's, seen the pictures of those it seems to be replaced with um, yellow and now huh. this guy is not totally um, in his colors that he's going to be when he's an adult. He's still going through color changing. He's only about two weeks old uh, as a frog froglet. Since he was a tadpole, he's about two weeks old. And he's still going to have some color changing to do. So it should be interesting to see the color changes. I'll do another video, uh, an update, um, uh, maybe in a, another couple weeks to see, uh, to see if the colors have changed drastically or not. Now, how do you feed these? What do you feed these frogs when I, you care for them? I've noticed their favorite food is crickets uh, and moths. And, and crickets are uh, pretty difficult to catch. We don't here in uh, in Mexico. We don't uh, have the um, the means to just go to the pet store and and buy crickets like uh, like we do like I did in the states. When I used to have these, so we have to. I have to catch everything in the yard. Of course, we. I don't use any. There's no pesticides or, or any any of that in in our yard. Oh yeah, you have to be very careful of that. Don't want to feed these little guys any pesticides, just like all of nature. Yes. That's right. So, can you show us an example? Um, I don't know if they'll eat during the day because you say that they're nocturnal. But can you show us an example of? of how you would catch this food or how you would feed the frog. Can you give us an example for those of um, that there are those viewers that are watching that are uh, maybe interested in frog care? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to put him back in his enclosure and we might be able to actually see what they do. Oh, well, this one here is already on the glass. Oh, this one's sleeping. 
this container that I have them in is uh, I was fortunate enough to they make a little football yes <laughs> to acquire a uh, this is like a kind of like a, a, a bulk cereal case for a, from a grocery store where you get the where you get the food out of the bottom of it and it just comes out in a bag here and it's very convenient to see these guys now what I do is I take I just have a little jar and I make sure the mouth of it is can fit up to this so that the bugs go into there instead of going out to the sides all you do is you just go up to go up to one of these lights I have a cool skull light here it is uh, just Halloween just passed and uh, at nighttime um, oh I saw a bug move in there yep there's a uh, moss all the moss you can get you just t leave you have a light bulb in there and you can just undo this an LED so it doesn't LED melt the bulb. plastic that's right LED bulb that's right I forgot to mention that um, you can take it and empty all the moths into your into your container uh, you should do it every day um, uh, otherwise they the moths tend to die I don't know if it gets too hot in there or whatever uh. they can't get out but the the moths die what I really would like to do is maybe cut a hole in the bottom of this and take a jar like this and maybe oh. screw into the bottom of this future plans for, for a night um, maybe I'll do that uh, another video on that and see how it works and every night to just come out unscrew the jar put the lid on the jar go back over to your frogs and what I do, and here's a, here's a pro tip, here's a sneaky tip. I take a flashlight and I put it to the top of this, the, of the enclosure. Um, if, if I was to try to put the moths in here, they all are going to fly out the sides and ah, fly in. Right. So, uh, which most people are going to have an enclosure like that with, right. with a top opening. So I take the light and I put it up on the top. So this is the light. And I put the moths in here like this. And they all fly from the jar and follow the light. And they go ah, up to the light and they tricky. go right, right in there. So, Well, that's great. And have you named these two froglets yet? I have not yet. Um, at, if anybody has any suggestions, actually, um, you could leave them in the comments below. I actually have five of them. There's five of them in here. I had um, probably close to 150 total of them. And I let them go in my yard. I raise them to, uh, I let them go in the trees. I'm going to build a pond here. And I hope maybe in a couple of years when they're sexually mature, they will come back down from the trees and start their life cycle all over again in my pond. So a few more questions. So these are native here. And when they reach full adulthood, you'll let them go and uh, they'll return to the wild here and You'll, they'll hopefully just stay um, in this yard at, with, around a water feature or something like that? That is the plan, yes. That is hopefully, I have, uh, it seems to be um, the right uh, habitat around here for them in this particular yard. And the only thing that's missing for the breeding is the water. And for our, our viewers um, that might want to have their own enclosure, um, can you tell me, is this dirt special, or is this, what kind of plant is this, or do they need water the, in their enclosure? The or? dirt is just, um, it, this is just, it's, it's actually kind of like a clay. This is just like a black clay. Um, it it serves better than loose dirt because the, uh, the looser the dirt, the bugs tend to uh, bury down into the dirt and the frogs aren't able to eat them. Um, and the plant is philodendron. It's just okay. normal philodendron. It's the best plant that oh, you could probably a, use for a frog. It's great. So easy to take care of. Um, it doesn't really need a whole lot of light, just uh, ambient light that is coming from the sides of the, of the uh, space here is enough for it. And also, um, this time of so year, don't put them in direct cool. sunlight. Don't put them in direct sunlight. Or, uh, the frogs that wouldn't don't really like that well, either. Well, they're nocturnal, so they probably don't dig the sunlight too much, no. anyways. They like it nice and dark mm -hmm. and dark and wet. So. And actually, um, I don't have. I I had holes in the tops of my other one, 
and it was too it was actually too much air getting in there and uh -huh. not enough humidity yes and i would i would spray the enclosure every night and i would check it and all the humidity would be gone and i was wondering like what you know what's going on and well, i had too much air there's no holes in this at all uh, i might have to put some hole i keep this in complete shade um, I might add some holes later on in the year, but right now it is... They're happy. Yeah, it's coming up on winter time, and when I come and check on them, it's nice and misty in here, and, well, and the water, jumpy and one they go? seem very happy. So here's Probably the one on that we leaf. just had right here. On a leaf. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what the viewers will come up with for some sweet little froggy names. That was a great idea because... You know, five might be too many to name, and they don't look too much different, but they have subtle differences. Like this one maybe could be named Sleepy, because this one doesn't want to wake up or talk to us at all. But the other one, that one has been awake, so maybe he's, since they're nighttime animals, maybe the ones that stay awake during the day, they're party animals, There's right? There's a leaf right here. So they close up real tight on a leaf like that uh, for camouflage, and then also to conserve their moisture. They kind of lock them, lock their limbs in and close their eyes. And... You're doing like a little moisture football. Yep. Let's see if I can get it in the shot. Ooh. And if you were walking there somewhere we down in the in the forest or in the jungle and you came across a leaf with one of these on it, I probably could guarantee that you, you would not see it. One. Oh, <laughs> and there's our little party animal going back for his nap. Animal, that's a good name for one of them. Animal. That's great. All right. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thank we'll you. see you next time, and okay. maybe we'll, you'll have something else fun to show us. Absolutely.